Oh, oh, big walleye. Looking at it right now. Just looking at it right now. Come on, eat it. Eat it. All right, what is up, guys? I am set up on a Saturday afternoon here. And my goal is today to try and catch a walleye on the underwater camera. And as I was setting up here, I started jigging before I even had the cameras on. And a walleye came up and looked at my spoon and stared at it and he didn't hit it. So we got lots of time here till dark. So I'm hoping we can get a walleye to hit here before it gets too dark to see it on the camera. Should be a good afternoon. It's kind of a post cold front here. Not really ideal weather, but we also have a pretty strong south wind coming in today and a warm front coming tomorrow. So that may trigger some fish. The pike I've seen have been pretty aggressive so far. So we will see what happens. There's one. <laughs> that pike just smoked the spoon. <laughs> that was awesome. Did not see him coming. <laughs> that was super cool. Wow. Love it. Love it. Come on up here, buddy. Nice. <laughs> oh, just an eater. Not a huge pike, but man, so cool to see him hit that spoon. That's the uh, clam ribbon leech flutter spoon. It's been a very good spoon for me so far. Caught quite a few fish on it early, but uh, hopefully we can get a walleye to do that. <laughs> that was awesome. Come on, come on. Well, that's not a bad fish. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, here comes another one. It's the second one, different fish. Oh, he grabbed it and spit it so fast. Come on, come on. Come on, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it. Got him. Oh, oh, oh that was sick. Oh, 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 that was too cool. Now he's in the camera, unfortunately. Whoa. Whoa, buddy. <laughs> even land this fish we'll just have to let them wear out this is interesting oh we got him coming up the other hole mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Hey, I got him <laughs> oh nice sweet I can't believe I landed that one actually. That was pretty wild. He wrapped me up in the camera, which happens. It's part of the risk of camera fishing, but honestly, not bad pike really at all. Smoked that spoon again. <laughs> this is gonna be fun just catching pike. I don't even care if I catch a walleye if I can do this all afternoon. Let's see, get another fat head. Nice juicy one. Oh, that's nice. Oh, there's one, there's one, there's one. Oh, that was a big one. Oh, he came right up to it. Right up to it. This far. Yep, there he is. <laughs> Not a very big one, but I don't care. I'll 
kitchen. That was cool. That's number four, no, three or four on the camera. Basically, they're all coming in and eating. The pike are definitely eating the spoon, no problem, but the walleyes, I may have to change my bait. See if I can get them to bite. Oh. Oh, missed one. Man. What happened there? Oh man. I think he grabbed my dead stick here. Oh, there goes a walleye. Oh, come on. What is going on? No idea what just happened. Okay, there's my dead stick. Oh, big walleye, looking at it right now. Just looking at it right now. Come on, eat it, eat it. Eat it. Unreal, he's just staring at it. I'm gonna drop it, I'm gonna drop it. hit it. He didn't eat it. He hit it. Okay, we gotta drop the spoon down. Gotta drop the spoon down. Oh, he's staring at it. He's staring at it. Oh, he's nibbling on it. He's literally nibbling on it, you guys. Unbelievable. Okay, I'm dropping the spoon. Dropping the spoon. Crazy. Crazy man. Oh, did he hit it? Did he hit off camera? I think he hit it off camera. I didn't have it on the camera. I was literally, I let it flutter down to bottom and he picked it just off the bottom, guys. This is that same fish. This is a walleye. Yep. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, I can't believe I didn't get the hit though. Still, that was cool. Hopefully I can land him. It's a nice fish. I think he might be a keeper. Oh yeah. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. There we go, you guys. Oh man. Walleye, almost on the camera. He was just out of frame. Oh, that was cool. He was chasing my dead stick minnow. And I was watching him. He was aggressive. I knew he was going to hit it. Or I thought he was going to hit it. And then he didn't. And I dropped the spoon down. And it fluttered away from the hole. And he must have watched it flutter away from the hole. And I picked it up off the bottom and felt weight. Bam. Walleye. Nice fish too. That is cool. Great fish. Alright guys. There's the bait right there. I just got that walleye on. That's a, basically a chartreuse and orange fire tiger. Um leech slaughter spoon from clam and that bait right there is really interesting because what it'll do is it'll flutter off to the side of your hole on the drop which is exactly what happened when i saw that walleye i wasn't going to eat my sucker uh, i wanted to get this spoon down there so i i just free flawed it and it floated off to the side and it was out of frame on the camera but as i kind of pulled it back it swam and fluttered and that wall I just smoked it so it's a very different bait as far as action goes when you've got that that heavy flutter and uh, it worked so got to get down there and hopefully get another one in the frame this time we'll see but that was totally worth the trip right there I mean even if I don't get another one on the, on the camera eating that was a sick fish I think we just had a wall I take the dead stick. I think we got him. Oh man, didn't have my spoon down, but I'm pretty sure we got that eat on camera. Oh yeah, yep, another walleye. Nice, another walleye, guys. 
<laughs> I wasn't looking. That one we may or may not have got on the camera, but that is another great eating fish right there. I've got two pike and one walleye, and uh, even though that's a nice eating fish, I'm gonna let that guy go. And I don't really need to keep any more fish tonight, so he gets a free pass, but absolutely beautiful walleye right there. Let's let him go. Okay, let's get this dead stick back down. I'm just using like medium sized suckers. And the reason I use suckers on a dead stick instead of shiners is because they swim down. Shiners tend to swim up, so to get them on the camera, it's a little bit easier. Just a medium sized uh, sucker. I'm using a 30 pound leader because of the pike I was catching earlier, but walleyes aren't seeming to be bothered by that. So about a foot long, 30 pound floral leader, one split shot, getting the job done. All right, realistically, we only have a, probably a few more minutes here that we're gonna be able to see anything on the underwater camera. But uh, if we don't get any more, um, this was an awesome day and I, I feel like I definitely got accomplished what I was trying to get accomplished. We'll see when we look at the footage if I got that one hit per, uh, really well on camera or not. But um, man, I was so close to getting the one on the spoon on the frame too. But still, super cool catch. Been a blast. Um, hopefully we'll be able to come out here tomorrow afternoon and do this again. That's my goal. So catching fish on a camera is kind of my favorite way to get them. And walleyes are a big challenge. So I feel like we made it happen today and I'm pretty happy. So. All right. So what kind of spots am I looking for when I'm looking to film with a camera and fish with the camera? I'm looking for a few different factors. So you need light. A few things affect light. Number one, depth. Number two, water clarity. Number three, snow cover and ice cover. And then number four, the time of day, cloud cover. So obviously the more of those factors you can kind of stack in your favor, the better off you're gonna be. Typically my, my most successful camera fishing has been in around that eight to 10 foot range around weeds on semi-clear to clear lakes and uh, you know during the middle of the day whether there's cloud cover or not um, you can extend that into the evening sometimes if you have a really clear bright day you can you can fish with the camera till basically sundown if the conditions are right so now as far as catching fish what I'm looking for is weeds weeds are king when it comes to shallow water and clear water you're looking for weed beds. So obviously standing weeds are the best, you know, some sort of standing green weeds are, are the ideal spot. And then what I really look for, and the biggest key, especially for game fish, is I drop the camera and I look for a spot that's got a lot of bait fish. You know, you want a lot of pan fish in the area. You know, like the spot I was fishing in that walleye video, the bottom was just carpeted with baby pan fish. Every fish you catch there has bluegills in their stomachs. Those big fish, those big pike and walleyes are coming in there and they're hunting those bluegills. Now when I'm actually looking to set up my shack, I want to be on the spot on the spot. So if I'm setting up for this camera fishing, I want to have cameraed a whole bunch of holes in the area, seen where most of the fish are actually sitting, and then look for a piece of structure like a, a weed clump or the very end of the point to set up on like in that walleye video. I'm on the very tip of the edge of the weeds on the point of a big underwater extension. And that's just concentrates fish. You know it's gonna be a contact point and that's why you can sit there all day and fish will keep moving in and out. Definitely had more success on bigger pieces of structure too. Like if you're just fishing a really small weed line, like defined weed line, it's a lot tougher to get the fish to stay in that area and kind of hunt in that area. You might get fish coming by once in a while, but I like to find a big tapering point or a big weed flat or something like that that's gonna hold fish and keep fish milling around in that area basically all day uh, so I don't have to move. Because that is not a mobile type of fishing, that's the other thing. Like you have to set up in one spot and kind of stay there. So you want it to be a spot fish are living around and hanging around. The, the more concentrations of fish that stay in that area, the better off you're gonna be. So that's kind of what I'm looking for when, as far as setting up. So as far as how I'm fishing these fish, you know, whether it's 
pike or walleyes or a big perch or bass, I'm usually jigging with some kind of spoon or glide bait and then I usually have some sort of dead stick behind that uh, as far as the camera goes beyond where my jig is. So I'm watching the fish react to my jig. Sometimes the fish are, you know, much more aggressive on the live bait. But a lot of times you can really trigger these fish to bite because you can see them. So you can you can tailor your action of the bait to what the fish's mood is when you have them on a camera. So I often do catch them on the jig before they'll hit the dead stick just because they come in on it. I can see what their mood is and I can trigger them. So it's a really good way to understand what the fish are doing. And a lot of times I'll jig pretty aggressively. I'll jig the spoon up and down to get it flashing or I'll rip the glide bait. But when fish come in, a lot of times I'm just sitting there and quivering it in front of their face and just they'll just put their nose to it and they'll kind of sniff it out and all of a sudden they'll just lunge and grab it. You know, sometimes they just come in and smoke it while you're jigging it aggressively, but most of the time it's a slow kind of progression and then all of a sudden they just get real positive and smoke it. Um, but you can kind of learn how to, to jig your bait as fish come in better than you can with a sonar. Uh, just because it, you can see what they're doing. So that's kind of how I approach the actual fishing. I like to use sucker minnows for my dead stick because of the fact that they swim down. So if you use a shiner, it's going to always be trying to swim up and it's going to be swimming out of the cone or out of the frame of your, of your video. So I like to have a sucker on a tight line and he just tends to swim down. He might swim in a little circle, but he's never going to swim up away out of the frame. So that's been my best minnow to use. Fatheads work too. They swim down if you want a smaller minnow. But fatheads or suckers are the way to go. Leave the shiners on the set lines and let them swim around. But uh, that's kind of one little good tip is to uh, use minnows that want to go towards the bottom instead of towards the surface when they're hooked. I've been using a Markham Pursuit HD uh, lithium uh, unit for all of my recording. The reason I use this is the HD is really good on this camera. You know, um, I used to use a Vexilar and I still use a Vexilar. That's the one I use on my set lines. It's just a very plain Jane camera, but it's bulletproof and it works great. But as far as getting that high def footage, uh, I really like the Markham Pursuit. It also has a built-in uh, DVR, so all you need is a mini SD card and you plug and play and you're pretty much ready to rock. The Vexilar is a great cheaper option. It's much cheaper. You can buy the DVR for it and it's the same thing. Plug and play. Works awesome. You're just not going to get the HD capabilities out of it. So um, I'll leave a link below for those two cameras. Uh, they're great cameras and either one will work for you. So uh, how I set this up with my Pursuit is I just have a, a manual tripod. I may be looking for a power tripod next year so I can kind of pan a little bit easier, but I just use a basic three leg tripod to hold my camera. And then I have a, a actual like camera tripod, a small one that holds my camera head so I can keep it up off the ice. And I, it's just a nice light one. I'll leave a description for that too. It's a pretty slick little uh, deal. I broke one of the legs off this year. It's been a rough year. Uh, on the old ice, so I got to order a new one myself, but uh, it's a pretty slick little stand. So um, I'm using that and uh, That sits right in front of me so I can watch the camera Just like I'm doing right now. I'm watching that camera and seeing everything that happens on there And then I like to drill my holes about three feet apart So three feet seems to be kind of the magic number where your bait is in the right zone where it stays in the frame really well but it also isn't so far away that you can't see the color on it in some of that more murky water. And also, you don't want to be too close to the camera because you're going to be jigging and your bait's going to be flying out of the frame. And then also you have more chance of tangling a fish in the camera if one does come in and you hook one. So three feet's kind of been the magic number for me. And then if I have a dead stick, I'll put it beyond three feet at like four and a half feet. Uh, behind my bait so I can still see that minnow kind of swimming back there and then as far as how the placement of my Camera itself. I like to face the camera at a slightly upward angle So I like the, the camera almost sitting on bottom and then looking up at the fish because I want to see that full silhouette of the fish I don't want to see it 
backdrop against the bottom at all because you can just see so much better when the fish is silhouetted kind of up at the light so for fishing that's what i like you know on a super clear lake it might be kind of nice to see the weeds and stuff in the frame but just for practical uh filming and and also just practical fishing i like to point it up and put the camera towards the bottom so that's how i do it i have done some like that youtube video i did of lake superior fishing i pointed i had the camera up high pointed down towards the bottom but lake superior of course is super super clear and you could see really well and i also do that when i'm dealing with like spooky fish that are scared of the camera which trout and salmon tend to be you know when you're fishing in the weeds and walleyes and bass and and pike are around they're used to long stringy things going up and down they're not going to be camera shy so I don't worry about it too much but in like an open water situation like that with trout and salmon I like to keep it up and point it down towards the bottom just so those fish can't see the camera so that's my setup also any questions feel free to message me on Instagram hooked up Wisconsin thanks for watching guys we'll catch you guys later get hooked up